In this section, we will try to have a look on the history of different mobile generations and what the benefits, the features, or the enhancements that each generation of network brought with it, and what are the significant milestones in development of mobile communications. So, let's have a look on the previous mobile generations. There never was something called as 1G. It was basically a network with only voice call capabilities and services and only got the name 1G after 2G was put in use. During this 2G generation that lasted for a while from 1980s to 2003, there were quite few enhancements and features added within the spectrum itself, such as GSM, GPRS, and EDGE. 2G enabled people to send messages and enjoy roaming services. The GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communications. It enabled data transfer on top of voice communication at speeds of 30 kilobit per second, which of course in today's speed standards something neglected. The 2G played a vital role in the evolution as mobile technology and provided voice call services and the continuity while moving and even while roaming during travel. Then we had the GPRS, which is General Packet Radio Service. It operated on similar 2G technology as GSM, with a few adjustments and enhancements that enabled it to reach higher data speeds around 100 kilobit per second. Then we have the EDGE, which stands for Enhanced Data Rates for GSM Evolution. It was introduced in 2003, and it was known to be 2.9G due to its significant advancement over GPRS and GSM. The EDGE offered high speeds of something like 135 kilobit per second and it continued to be used on many mobile networks even till today as it satisfies the basic needs of data speeds for the users in different parts of the world. Then we had the introduction of 3G or what is called UMTS Universal Mobile Telecommunication System where it brought a better mobile internet experience and a basic video call, and it was one of the main reasons of the revolution in the mobile app's development. And then we have the huge advancement in mobile technology with the introduction of 4G, the LTE, and the voice over LTE. The 4G bring all IB services, voice and data, and a fast broadband internet experience with unified networks architecture and the protocol. The LTE stands for long-term evolution. It was much of a complete redesign and simplification of the 3G network. It resulted in a significant reduction in transfer latency and hence increasing the efficiency of the network. We have also increased the speeds of data rates which reached a peak of one gigabit per second and we enjoyed the introduction of Internet of Things. And then now we are here with the 5G, where it expanded broadband wireless services beyond the mobile Internet to Internet of Things and the critical, and the critical communication services requiring low latency and the massive machine type communication. The goals for 5G include significantly faster speeds that can reach up to 10 gigabit per second, plus lower power requirements to better support a huge number of new Internet of Things devices, sensors, and objects that can reach up to billions of connected devices. So, in conclusion, we can say that the 5G will have capabilities to provide faster dialing speeds with ultra low latency, multiple device connectivity, and higher data rates. So just to recap, the 1G has been developed in 1980s 
and has been completed in early 1990s. It is based on analog system and the speed in 1G reached up to 2.4 kilobit per second and it allowed users to make voice calls in one country without roaming. Then for the 2G, it was developed in late 1980s and completed in late 1990s. And using 2G, the phone conversations became digitally encrypted and the speed reached average 30 to 35 kilobit per second and a peak of 64 kilobit per second. The 2G is more efficient on frequency spectrum compared to 1G. It is allowing the voice signals to become digitized and compressed. And the introduction of data services, which include short messaging services, the SMS or text messaging, was done over the 2G. One benefit also for using the digital signals for 2G is that it is using less power in battery and it offered a semi-global facility. Then we have the general packet radio services, the GPRS, and the maximum download speed at the time reached 80 kilobit per second. And then finally we have the edge, the enhanced data rates for GSM revolution. And when edge was used, the speed was improved to 236 kilobit per second. For the 3G, it has been developed between late 1990s till 2010 and for 3G the transmission speed has been increased until it reached 2 megabit per second. The 3G offered superior voice quality and good clarity in video conference and it offered also some new services like emailing and information serving. It offered online shopping, banking, and gaming, and of course, it allowed the global roaming. Then we have the 3.5G networks, which of course offered high data rates, and it allowed to have a true mobile internet experience. And the 3G and the 3.5G was the reason for the boom in the mobile applications ecosystem. Then the 4G was developed in 2010, offered faster and more reliable services, and of course the speed has been increased until it reached around 100 megabit per second. It offered high performance and also it offered easy roaming at low cost. Then we have the 4.5G or the LTE advanced networks, which doubled the data speeds from 4G until it has been increased to bigger numbers. It's good to note that unlike the voice-oriented 2G and 3G, which were primarily circuit switched networks with varying attempts to accommodate the packet switching principles, we have the 4G, a fully packet switched network optimized for data services. The 5G is building on this packet switching capability. So, the 4G and the 5G networks can coexist for a long while because the transmission from 4G to 5G does not require a big shift in the philosophy of the technology itself. So, the LTE already laid the foundation for future iterations of packet based mobile networks. And here, a list of the references that you can try to visit in case you need to get more information and more details about the different topics that we are discussing throughout the course.